I I certainly became uh, a person who felt that the present, uh, you know, the the system of government uh, was going to have to be radically changed, and I. Um, I was a person who became very, very angry, and um, you know, certainly after the killing of Dr. King and earlier, you know, the killing of Malcolm and um, the riots. While knowing that was no no answer, um, I really, I really understood that, and there was a part of me that really supported it. I mean, you know, yeah, even though, well, certainly, in fact, in, in New York, I was in New York uh, when Dr. King was killed. And I was downtown, because I was working for the National Council of Negro Women. And we were meeting uh, in Midtown Manhattan when the word came. And I, I was so alienated at that moment from being, you know, in white America. And I can remember we were staying at a hotel because uh, we were having a, a staff meeting and I was the Midwest uh, Regional Coordinator for a project called Woman Power and uh, we were all there and I don't recall if anybody went with me but I immediately went up to Harlem, uh, got on a a subway and went up to Harlem and I had nowhere to go up there. But of course people had begun coming out on the streets and rioting. And so I just uh, stayed out there all night with the people. We were just, you know, I mean I never did anything but just stay with the crowds that were just sort of, and you know, I watched people breaking out the windows and taking the appliances out on 125th Street and the looting and and so I just ran with the people who were doing it, uh, and it was, it was my my way of of uh, rebellion, uh, joining the rebellion, and uh, identifying with the rage, my own rage, mingling in um, with the with the rage, and you know, running between buildings and. We were out there all night, you know, and I went, I didn't go back down to Midtown until the next morning. But it was, it was just, um, a f it really was a feeling of uh, helplessness, too. So that, uh, you know, he was dead, what could you do? But just, sh just show rage, you know, that's how I felt. He, you couldn't bring him back. He was already gone, and it was um, it was so awful. I just can remember feeling so much rage and so much helplessness at the same time. Um, and certainly from that point on, um, I was very interested in hearing about from these groups that were planning things like there was this group called the Republic of New Africa who said, you know, let's give us five states uh, and let all the um, uh, black people live in those states and set up an independent nation. So, you know, I went to, I don't think I got to their founding convention, but I went to several of their national meetings. Uh, I also would go and hear um, to the Nation of Islam and hear uh, what the the teachings there, you know, which was again about the separate, uh, because I I really despaired uh, that there was ever going to be a way for um, black people to get any justice in this society. So I had I came to that point of feeling that maybe separation out is the only way. Reparations. Uh, and and taking those reparations to a separate in land mass, um, and then there were always groups talking about going back to Africa, and so I looked into that, you know, and uh, so that's for a period where my head was. 
that uh, there's no way to uh, get justice here. It'll never happen. And certainly the Vietnam uh, War was another factor, you know, and the fact that so many black men were dying there. And then, of course, the person uh, to whom I was married was one of those uh, SNCC people who refused to go in, Mike Simmons, along with Cleve Sellers and some others, and of course they all went to prison. And so I had, I went through that whole period of, you know, going to court and uh, going, sitting through the trial of, of my ex-husband. And, you know, the position he took was that he was working in the civil rights movement, and he should not be asked to leave that work to go and give freedom, quote unquote, to people in Vietnam. When he was saying on the witness stand, I don't have freedom here. I'm working in Arkansas. I've worked in, in, in Georgia with my own people. We don't have freedom. And you expect me to pick up a gun and possibly die to give freedom to somebody uh, halfway around the world. You know, that was his, his position, and of course, uh, it was one that carried no weight, and he was sentenced to three and a half years. Um, so that was, that was another piece of my rage and anger. And of course, he did three years in Lewisburg Federal Penitentiary.